Hello, it's Scott Manley here with part 9 of Eve or Bust and we are most definitely in the Eve category now. We are in business, we have landed our return vehicle. The only damage it has sustained has been to its tyres. So now we need to put the crew on the surface in full knowledge that they will be able to repair their launch vehicle and return to the skies and therefore back home to their little gerbil kitties, whatever they are. So, wow. I was about to say that he's going to try and get back inside this rover, but uh, he's having some trouble there. Let's try and get in there again. Come on. Now, obviously, this is all done at four times normal speed because, frankly, it's a very, very long, 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 long episode without the four times time acceleration. So I think that having tried that a couple of times, I'm not getting in there. So instead, we'll go in the back door and sit inside there. So at least when we get to the surface, we'll be able to control it from there. In we go. And who else do we have? We have another astronaut who's going to come in the same way. It's rather beautiful flying down this way. We can actually see the entire vehicle, appreciate the amount of the complexity of this structure and how much hardware we have with us. It really looks like a space station. Now, he's going to be taking the the submersible airship and this other one well he is once again heading airship there's two people in each vehicle two kerbals in each vehicle although all four of them can happily live in the giant mobile base whereas there's only really room for a couple of guys on the submersible there's actually room for all of them on the submersible as well but we we want them to be comfortable that's why the rolling base had so much room in it it will have a very, it'll have a disco in there, I'm sure, because you know I know I know Kerbals, they like to disco dance, right? They're a disco dancer and a sweet romancer. Um, yeah, get in there. Okay. So now we need to decide which one goes first, and the obvious one to go down first is a submarine airship, and there is a reason for this. The reason is that it is the one that has the deorbit unit attached to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait until we're going to wait two orbits. That's the important part because in, we are in a semi-synchronous orbit. That means that our orbit goes around twice. The planet goes around once. So every two orbits, we can drop something off. And so we go out to Apoaps and we undock the undock the submarine and the airship and everything. And we are all set. So we're going to take control of this. It is attached on the rear there. We're going to use the um, the RCS to push it along, give it a little bit of thrust, take it out away from the spacecraft, and what we're doing is we're adjusting the periaps height to bring it down to 60 kilometers, which is exactly what we used for the other vehicle, right? So if the aerodynamic properties of both vehicles are the same, they should land in roughly the same place. Um... Although, one for, as I pointed out, we skipped through the atmosphere with the previous vehicle, so perhaps I should have been a little more aggressive and dropped it onto the surface a little more quickly. Now, because we only need a small amount of delta V, we can actually send this stage back. This is essentially like a little tug, which will do all the deorbiting for us. And in fact, it doesn't need much fuel at all, so it's going to be a, a convenient... Uh, fuel module which will actually fly with our lander. We're just going to take this back to the station, dock it on there. Uh, there will be a nice little slot for it next to the old, uh, next to the, well, was it next to the rover, next to the giant mobile science lab? We're just going to stick it on there. And uh, once you get used to this docking alignment indicator, it makes a whole lot more sense. Basically, the big orange one is the to make sure you were rotated correctly. The yellow vector inside is your velocity vector and the green crosshairs are whether you are aligned with the target. So you need to get the green thing and the orange thing aligned. And then the yellow thing should probably be aligned down the middle. And then at the top, you have a rotation indicator where you can make sure you're actually pointed in roughly the right direction. Not that I actually care in this case. But uh, it's nice if you're perhaps completely OCD about making sure that all your parts line up. But anyway, uh, docking is r rather quick, rather easy. And now we, once we get in there, we can return control back to the descent stage, which is now on its way to the planet Eve. 
And so all we do is we time accelerate downwards. So they're periaps 60.1 uh, 60.1 kilometers. That might be a little higher. Let us hope that it is sufficiently close in terms of aerodynamic properties to my other vehicle. So skimming through the atmosphere, of course, looking the part, and well, we've skipped out. Uh oh. This is bad news. So we skipped out of the atmosphere. We did not slow down enough. Presumably these Hulican Lab parts are particularly non-wind resistant, let's say. <laughs> They're particularly aerodynamic. So my aerodynamics left me flying around the planet halfway. So um, yeah, we've overshot terribly and we're going to have to fly back manually. But that's okay, you know, this is a submersible airship. In fact, look, we managed to skip almost all the way around to the other side of the planet. Look, there we are. We are basically on the other side of the planet. This is just about the worst attempt at landing in the same place that is actually possible within the game. If I had gone further around, I would have started getting closer to the target again. Uh, yeah, also, Bill, not the best pilot here, spinning out of control, but... You know, the great thing about an airship is that it is hard to crash it. It gets control. Once we get the buoyancy control enabled, we are flying again. We are fine. So we have a long journey ahead of us. And, well, the only way for us to do this is to basically point it in the right way, the right direction, and hold the H key. So I actually spent a couple of nights left this running with a, a weight on the H key, more or less pointing the right way. I actually landed a couple of times. Uh, also note, the air intake will not work by default on EVE. You either have to use a modified part or you can actually modify the save file to change the variable. There's a, there's a configuration option that says check for oxygen and you can make that false. And then it will take in air, even although it's in a planet which has no, a non-oxygen atmosphere. But uh, yeah, this is about you know ten times normal speed, so you can appreciate um, you can you can get a glimpse of the tedium that uh, the computer dealt with. This is about one hour's worth of flying condensed into a few seconds. It can actually go about as fast as thirty meters per second under the right conditions. Um, most of the time, you would be expecting about twenty five to thirty, but again, you know, you pretty much left a weight on the H key in it would travel forwards for a few hours and then you'd get up in the morning and find that it had pointed off in the wrong direction and you had to adjust it again. And every now and then, you got to appreciate a sunrise or a sunset because, let's face it, you have to take time out to view these wonders of nature. P the planet Eve is a beautiful place. I mean, you know, if you go to Eve... You should learn to appreciate. After all, the odds are you're going to be stuck there for a really long time unless you know what you're doing. So yes, we ultimately, after a couple of days, we bring our airship, submersible airship, back close, within about 50 kilometers to the target. We're still relatively near to the sea here, and our, our pilot can get out and set foot on the planet Eve for the first time. Yes, one giant step for a well, one small step, one giant fall. You know, Kerbals aren't great at speeches, and neither am I. Look, at there he is there, standing on the surface, looking at the magnificent purple vistas presented to him by this land. And so now, after a couple of orbits later, it's time to send the rover down. Now, the rover is, of course, doesn't have any engines on it. Instead, we need to use this deorbit system as well. Now, uh, Jebediah is going to be the man in the control seat this time, so we're going to try and get him in. Maybe this will work. Yes, so we're going to sit him on that seat there so at least he can fly the vehicle. Otherwise, it has no way to control it. So we're just bringing this around, stick it on the front there. Once again, using the marvellous docking alignment indicator, which saves me so much time and pain and lets me actually fly things without turning camera angles all the time. Look at that. Beautiful. That's practically as good as the real thing. Okay, so once again, we need to bring the periaps down to just about 60 kilometers. Um, I might be a little aggressive this time because I certainly don't want to skip past. If I skip 
come down early, that's okay because it means I will land on the ground. If I skip too far, I will end up in the ocean. And this thing cannot move in the ocean because it doesn't have any thrusters or anything, right? It has wheels and wheels don't really help you drive across water. Although apparently uh, the winner of the Nobel Prize for physics this year, uh, they demonstrated that it is possible for people to run on the surface of ponds if the pond is on the moon. This is a fascinating piece of work that I have to read more about. Yeah, the Nobel Prizes are being awarded tonight. It's September 12th. And Nobel Prizes are given to people that have performed scientific research of which the use is not necessarily obvious. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let us go on. So we're going to bring this back because what we're going to use this with is the... There's a little spacecraft on there and it can use some extra fuel. We'll take it out to Gilly. But uh, it's going to dock back with on the EVE station. Look at that. Magnificent spacecraft that it is. This whole thing is ultimately going to remain in orbit around EVE. The... The only part that's going to return is the crew canister with uh, this as an extra fuel tank. Technically, it could probably return without the, this as an extra fuel tank, but I don't want to have them lost in space, so we're bringing some extra fuel nevertheless. Again, docking indicator time! Just watch the skill with which I adjust everything, bring everything down, and dock. Excellent. So now, now the moment of truth. Well, actually, no. What we're going to do is we're going to try and get him into the into the cockpit again. So I've aligned... Uh, nope, that did not work. I thought that by aligning it vertically like that, we would make it make it easier because we, he wouldn't be in uh, in the way. There would be nothing in obstructing him or making him bounce off. But at this point, I think that it's that terrible strut structure that's getting in the way. So jettison it. And there we go. We finally get Jeb in the command seat, watching the rest of it drift away as we now prepare to spend the next six hours falling towards the surface of Eve. And there we go. Watching sunset. Hopefully the next time we see a sunset or sunrise, we will be safely on the surface of Eve, driving across the surface, investigating things, doing some awesome science. Uh, but for now, we can just appreciate the flashy red lights. We are, of course, entering the atmosphere backwards first because, well, because the back is more aerodynamic. It actually kind of looks like a spaceship with that as the nose, oddly enough, doesn't it? kind of pointy uh, except for the wheels obviously spacecraft don't really generally have big wheels like that. so this one also performs a small skip you see that we have we're now going up in the atmosphere again but uh, it looks like we're gonna perform a much smaller skip which is what we wanted we we judged this one just right i think it must be the hooligan labs parts are just lower air resistance which is obviously good if you're going to be building something that flies around, but if you're trying to have something land on a surface accurately using air braking, then it's going to screw you over and send you onto the other half of the planet. There, look, we've actually skipped up high enough that we are no longer being heated by the, the force of the atmosphere crushing against our hull. Well, and well, we're almost lined up with it perfectly. Eve has a very slow rotation speed. This is the beauty of the whole semi-synchronous uh, orbit technique. You can use a full synchronous orbit. It doesn't really matter. I just happen to, as long as it's a multiple, uh, I, I happen to just end up in a, an orbit that was close to that. And so that's what I used for the most efficiency. Okay, so I am actually flying over the top of this. Uh, I could deploy the parachutes now if uh, I wasn't one of these people that felt that it was wrong to try and deploy parachutes at um, hypersonic velocities. <laughs> um, yeah, it there would be no ill, it ha no ill would fa befall these parachutes if I actually deployed them while we were still burning up in the atmosphere. No, uh, no, but th that is just uh, me personally feeling that it is a bad idea. It looks like we're going to end up about 20 kilometers away from the target. So we're just going to fall down using uh, using gravity. Oh yes, and there is the submarine there in the background sitting close to the ocean. We shall explore this bay, find out what kind of life exists within the Evian Ocean. And now, 
There we go. Um, except we broke the parachute at the back. That's unfortunate. Well, we're going to land a little heavily on our back. We should be fine, though. We still have... We still have most of our parachutes working. <laughs> ah, what's a mission if you don't have an odd failure? Okay, 22 kilometers. I can drive that distance. And we are on the ground. No! With broken wheels. Broken wheels. Okay. So Jebediah is the driver and this dude is the engineer. He is going to be the one responsible for repairing all the wheels. And there he goes in and out like a pro. He, it, I tell you, he probably used to work in racing. You know, they have they come into the pits, the car is on fire and it is back on the track in seconds. Yes, Gerford, I think is his name. Gerford Kerman. Engineer extraordinaire paired up with Jebediah Kerman, the best pilot the Kerbal Space Program has to offer. Except he's driving instead. Now, this thing has a couple of nuclear generators in it, but it's not enough to run the power overnight. So what happens is I drive for a little while and I keep on needing to give the, the engine a little bit of power to keep, get it over the bumps. And eventually I run the battery dry and well, once the battery runs dry, I'm going to have to stop and let it recharge and it will recharge because I have the, the RTGs into the structure. There's actually a bunch of solar cells, but that's not there at night. And, you know, Jebediah is not going to wait. He's just going to be extra. He's just going to sit down, chill out, let the batteries recharge and off he goes again. So this can cover indefinite distances at night although you have to be perhaps somewhat patient i found that traveling uphill in some cases on steep hills i was only managing three meters per second so i would travel a very short distance and then find that i had to stop uh, very important that you use the brakes on this as well so eventually yes we get close 1.6 kilometers and this last stretch was up a rather steep hill you see here moving about five, six meters per second. So this is the last cycle, last stop-go cycle. And there we go, EVE rover mission. It is visible from the cockpit. And uh, we now have a job for our engineer. He has to go around, check it, make sure everything's working, repair all those tires, refit everything so that it may start heading uphill and finding the highest point that it can reach. It is only 2.4 kilometers up. We are aiming for seven kilometers. And I have a very high quality map that I've used and I'm gonna try and look for one of those locations, but it may say it takes some time. Thankfully, I will not make you watch 12 hours of driving towards these locations. I can edit all this out and do it for myself. I, I don't think I can talk for 12 hours straight without mentioning, you know, astronaut poop. And we already had one of those terrible videos. So let's not get onto the astronaut poop subject. Okay, and there we go. That is almost all of them. They're repairing. This man truly is the greatest Kerbal engineer. Seriously, he's doing a pretty good job. We should now have... Yes, we now have a fully drivable return stage. We are sitting pretty. We now need to get that to an altitude where it can be used. But uh, that will be in future episodes. And until then, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.